Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantelle and today I have another collaboration with Denny from Wizardry Workshop. We are both going to make our take on the Skelligro potion bottle, but I'm going to take it a couple of centuries back and going to make this portable potioneer's potions box. I'm not quite sure how to show you, but here it is. Let's get started. For this project I wanted to use my X tool machine and for that I needed to put the riser in because the riser is the part where I can engrave something that is higher than the actual machine itself. So after installing the riser I am cutting out the entire box with my laser cutter. X tool has kindly sent this machine to me and if you would like to know more about this machine I will leave all the details in the description box below. Just be mindful if you are getting this machine and you are getting the riser as well. The machine is heavy and sits on top of the riser and it's not the easiest thing to install. So just be mindful of that. You will need two people to do this. This is the tray where you, which you can lower and bring up more um, depending on which project you're making. And this is the button. And when I say start, we can see the machine cutting out the entire box for me. All the boxes you see me make, I have a website that I use to create these boxes. And I will leave that in the description box below as well. You can also download files for the Cricut, but also just to cut from normal paper. Here I am going to start assembling the box together and as you can see I made them with some T-joints and this is actually the inner box which is made from chipboard and the outer box is made from wood, 3 mil plywood and I'm putting them all together with wood glue. Any of the materials used I will leave them all down below. And here you can see there will be some room behind the inner box and the entire outer box, I'm going to leave some room there so I have a secret cavity. This is the entire box assembled and here you can see the line where I will be putting an extra piece of or layer of chipboard so this box can just nicely sit in there. You can see two big boxes there, but the, the other one I cut just a little bit too big. And then I will cut these kind of boxes to let it sit inside there. I'm just gonna glue on these pieces so the inner box can sit on top. So we have that secret cavity at the back. This is where all the parts are in and now I can let that top box slide in and it will sit just like so. And just like this first little box that sits inside the big box, I'm going to fill the entire box with more boxes so we can have a little potion cabinet kind of situation going on and here they all are. I also made little drawers to go inside these cavities. I, again I used the same website to make these for this project. I cannot share the dimensions because they are very specific for this kind of project and the potions that I will be using inside this box. So therefore I will not share the dimensions that I use. However, you can make your own using this website very, very easily. I have taped the top of the box to the box itself so it doesn't move and now I can use some hardware to make the hinges on the sides. I already had this, these hardware hinges and I thought they would just be perfect for this project. I 
to not go all the way through the wood I cut these screws down with pliers and I have to do that for all how many is there a lot <laughs> a lot of them I have to cut them all down uh, this is not the easiest process but it worked and um, it got the result I wanted and then of course I have to assemble them as well I did use some glue in between the screws and the wood as well just to make it extra secure now all the hardware is on I wanted to add something extra to the front of the box and here you can see a name appearing and I will talk about this name a little bit later in the video when I get to the potion bottles as well but this is the beauty of this x -Dual riser bed you can put if you wanted a suitcase or a guitar underneath and it will engrave on top of it it is a really really awesome system and this is exactly what I'm doing here. I wanted the maker of the box and the owner of the box. So you have the name of the company that made it and the owner of the box right there. And you can take it from the top or take it from the drawer at the front. So here is what that engraving looks like. Of course I'm not done here because I want to stain this box. Now I don't have any wood stain right now. I'd have no available at home. So I'm just going to use acrylic paint watered down with normal tap water. I'm going to give that a good mix and then apply it with a brush. And I think I apply two layers. And then this is the result of the staining of the box. You can still see the wood grain, which is what I wanted. And on the inside of the door or at the cover, I didn't put any staining because I will be covering that with some paper later. Then I wanted these letters to be a bit darker. So I'm just going in with a black paint. Then it was time to assemble all the pieces together and basically just glue them into the box. So I'm using wood glue to attach them all to the inside. And after assembling, I figured out that I had a bit of a gap sitting in between there. So I'm just going in with a popsicle stick to make sure that I have full space there. And then I'm going in with an extra piece of chipboard and just wedging that in there with wood glue. For the inside boxes and the drawers, I use the same brown paint that I used for the outside of the box, just less watered down. And then I will send it, in the end I will send it to age it up a bit and then I'll also go over with a lighter paint to age it up even more. So the top box here is sanded and as you can see here I've got very fine grit sandpaper and it just instantly ages it up. Then going in around the edges with some lighter paint to show some wear and tear. And of course we have to do the inside as well using the same paint. I'm using two layers for this part. And if you think that these projects take just a day to make, yeah, no, they take about four or five days to create because of um well the creating itself on the computer figure out what you're actually going to do the painting the assembly the filming and then you also have the editing ed as well afterwards so there's a lot of time and effort that goes into these boxes and any project really you probably know I have a second channel where I occasionally make journals as well and I have quite a big stash of scrapbook materials so this is one of the papers that i found that would fit quite nicely in this box so i'm aging up the edges just going around with some scissors and 
then aging it up with some paint and then gluing that in with some PVA glue I think I used here just gluing that on the inside of the door I will be making a little journal or a field notes pocket book that will be sitting in this pocket so this is the pocket that I'm making that will sit on top of the piece of paper that I've already put in there This is where I'm making the field notes, journal or pocket book, and I'm aging it up with some watered down acrylic paint. This is not my preferred method to do this. I would much rather use some coffee or tea to give that authentic stained look, but this worked for this purpose. Then folding that in half, and then I'm going to, um, well, trying to write out the whatever I want on the label and that is what I'm creating here if you try and write your own label make sure that you practice first before you commit because I did waste uh, a label or two <laughs> on this anyway the label is on now I'm just putting on some extra bits and pieces to make it look more interesting and then moving on to the signatures of this little notebook if you're interested in bookbinding on my second channel, I have multiple tutorials on how to make junk journals and journals in, in general using this binding as well. And I have used Coptic stitch binding in the past as well. So I'm just waxing the thread now with some beeswax, then threading my needle. And then I'm going to use the pamphlet stitch for this brown paper insert. Before I do that, however, I am rounding out the corners because I like rounded corners on my little journals. For the binding of the journal, I wanted to give this a little closure. I am using these punched out circles and then I'm going to punch in a Eyelet, an eyelet in the middle and just finding the middle here with my awl and I'm gonna layer two on top put the eyelet through and in the book and then or gluing it onto the book and then I can thread close it with this thread binding closure thing <laughs> I actually don't know what this closure is called but I like using it you can see it on office envelopes as well And here we have the finished little journal and it's ready to go into the pocket. Okay, I think we've landed at the point where I can talk a little bit about the background and my thoughts about why I'm creating this box and not just a potion bottle. The name you saw me engrave on the box earlier is Linfred of Stinchcombe. He was also known by the nickname the Potterer. He was a 12th century wizard and pioneering potioner, credited with inventing many medicinal potions. He was the founding patriarch of the Potter family. In the 12th century, Linfred lived in the village of Stinchcombe where he had the reputation as an eccentric, absent-minded man. Just going back to the video for a minute, I am painting cloth right now, just so I can make handles for the little boxes, so you can pull them out of the cavities, and also so we can lift the large cavity to get to the secret compartment. Linfred's helpful nature made him liked and his muggle neighbors often came to him seeking remedies for their ailments. 
he was always able to brew these potions for them using ingredients readily available from his garden. The muggles remained unaware that his remedies were magical and thus continued thinking of him as just a strange, lovable man who enjoyed pottering around in his garden with all his funny plants. This led to him being given the nickname the Potterer, which over the years was corrupted into simply Potter. In the meantime, I have finished all the drawers in the cavity and um, they are actually usable and I am really happy with how this is looking so far. So this was really my thought behind it. This was Linfred's box from the 12th century. I know they didn't really have the metal bits and pieces that I used in this box, but hey, it was a magical world, so who knows? He invented a number of medicinal potions and were used and manufactured long after his death. He invented early versions for Skelligro and the Pepper Up potions. So this is really where I wanted to take this box and this collaboration. It is the complete opposite of what Danny is doing. I have not seen what he is doing yet, but I'm very, very excited to watch his video after this one. So please also go and check this out after this video. Danny has made a bunch of labels, which I will not be using here because these ingredients I had in my mind that Linfred just took this case on his travels. This is his Potioneer's travel potion box. And I'm just filling this up with stuff that he found along the way. And therefore I'm using handwritten labels. I'm using simple ingredients like dried flowers, rice, uh, all kinds of bits and pieces. I did not put any liquid in here. The main reason for that is this one, this entire box is for sale on my website. I'm slowly running out of space, believe it or not. Um, but yes, if you are interested, go and grab it. But don't worry, I will be making a potion that kind of looks like a Skelligro potion in this one, because of course he was the inventor of the eventual Skelligro potion. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about 12th century medieval times medicinal stuff. The most common type of bandage in medieval times was made of cloth. So I have a whole drawer of cloth in here. And also moss was used to absorb blood and keep wounds clean. So there is another drawer like you see here with moss. Now a little bit about Skelligro. Skelligro was a dreadful tasting potion which restored and caused growth to bones. It was able to mend broken bones or even regrow entire bones that have vanished or been otherwise lost. For regrowing entire bones, the process was notably slow and painful and could take over a full day. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, by the way, I am um, just dragging this very hot piece of tea bag over a piece of paper, I wanted to make some parchment uh, scrolls. So I'm just aging up some papers here. And I have also made the labels from this paper. Skelligro was extremely effective when it came to regrowing, growing and mending bone, but smelled and tasted terrible and it often caused pain. When regrowing an entire bone, Harry Potter described the sensation as having large splinters lodged in his arm. The potion came in a large bottle and smoked as it was dispensed. Swallowing it burnt the throat and, according to Harry, it tasted awful and made him cough and splutter. Harry needed a dose of Skelligro after the bones in his right arm were broken during a Quidditch match in the 1992-1993 school year. Professor Gilderoy Lockhart foolishly attempted to mend the bones, accidentally causing them to disappear instead. Griphook was administered Skelligro by Fleur Delacour after escaping from Malfoy Manor in 1998 at her home Shell Cottage. And that's all the facts I have for you for this video. Let's get back to what I am doing. I am putting twine around these bottles just to give them a little bit more character. I'm securing them in place with a little bit of glue. And then burning away the excess 
fuzziness of this twine. This is actually the bone regen bottle that I'm working on right now. There is nothing inside the bottle, but I'm still going to glue down this bottle cap because I'm going to use some wax on top. I'm just putting some wax pellets in this little melter thing, the melting spoon over the little furnace. I have this wax seal, which is a plant one. I think I got that at a local shop here. These are the two scrolls of parchment that I have as well, which I will put some wax on as well, just on the thread. And then sealing that with that wax seal. Now going back to that potion bottle, I mixed a lot more of that wax and just pouring that on top. And you have to work fast because this sets really, really fast. And then just popping that skull on top. And I will show you in a minute what that looks like. And I'm just going in with a lighter to melt down the wax a little bit more because I dropped the bottle and I got it on my fingers. And let me tell you, that's hot. So don't do that. Don't, don't do what I did. And um, just making the label a little bit more aged with some watercolor paint. And then this bottle is done. Now I wanted to make sure that this bottle stays in place. So I have some more of the cloth that I used earlier. This is just some cotton sheet, by the way, that I dyed with some coffee. And this is how the potion bottle will sit inside. And I'm just checking where I want that cloth to be. And then I can attach two and then tie it with a bow. And this is how this potion will stay in place whilst traveling. I had to age up this skull a little bit because it was looking very bland. So with some black paint, I am just going to add some detail to this skull. And I suppose we're nearly done. I'm just going to put all these potion bottles in. And when everything is in place, it looks just complete and put together. And just as I imagined it would look like. On the inside, I've also attached a, a secret key at the back there. This is a real key, not a fake one. And for some more added, you know, interest, I have all these vintage papers that I can print whenever I want. So there are some vintage, like 18th century potion labels and um, pharmacy labels. Of also, he, he likes coffee, so you know there is a coffee thing as well and uh, these are just vintage labels that are just a nice addition to this box also maybe uh, a fictional photo of him and the scrolls of course we can't forget about those because you know you never know when you might need them and they are hid hiding in the secret compartment anyway let's have a look at the final result This box was really a joy to work on and I hope you enjoyed watching. Please go and check out what Danny has created. I will leave a link in the description box. All my social media can be found in the description box as well. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and of course become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!